Hello, everybody, and thank you for downloading episode 24 of We Got This with Mark and Hal. Just want to let you know very quickly, we are doing a live recording at DragonCon in Atlanta, Georgia. That's Labor Day weekend. You can go to dragoncon.org to get all the schedules when they're released. I know they're working on it right now, so I don't have an actual day and time, but it will be with a group of very special guests discussing a subject that we think is really cool and right up the alley of DragonCon and probably a bunch of you as well. Also, if you are new to the podcast and you haven't taken a moment to rate and review us on iTunes, we'd really appreciate it if you did. That helps us out and it helps other people on iTunes find us when they're looking for good podcasts to listen to. Finally, if you haven't checked out all the other great shows on MaximumFun.org, take a second and do it. At the end of the episode, you'll hear from a couple of podcasts on the network that we really, really enjoy. But they're all great, so take your pick and enjoy. Subscribe to them all, listen to them all, and you'll have a better life. And isn't that what this is all about? Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Soda, pop, or coke? That's right. Don't worry, everyone. We got this. Podcasts should have a theme song. Podcasts should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Uh, So let's jump into it. Today we're going to talk about uh, what to call soft drinks. So uh, tentatively, this is soda versus pop versus Coke. But the fact that you just called it what to call soft drinks, it sounds like soft drinks wins, right? I think soft drinks is like the category. Nobody ever goes somewhere and says, I could really use a soft drink, do they? Uh, I mean, I have stood at the counter and ordered a soft drink before and called it that. Where, where Especially if it's got one of those. I was in like a Burger King or something where they have the uh, the self serve machine, you know, where you can do all the uh, you do it yourself, so you don't tell them what kind, and they get mad at you if you do. I'm like, I'd like a Diet Coke, and they're like, the machine's behind you. <laughs> but so- don't tell me. I don't care what you want, Mister. <laughs> I don't get paid enough to worry about <laughs> what you're gonna do after I give you this cup. Our transaction yeah. is over. <laughs> I'm going to hand you this cup and I'm going to trust you. Yeah. That's you what want, I'm going to do. You want to do that dumb thing where you fill it with a little bit of every drink and try that out? I don't care. It is uh, inappropriately called a suicide, <laughs> at least where I'm from. That may change uh, from region to region. Much like Coke, soda, or pop, it could be a suicide in one region, a mixer-upper in the other, and a, uh, I don't know, vomit tumbler in the third. <laughs> Yes, three vomit tumblers, please. We're feeling adventurous. Oh, well, it must be ladies' night. <laughs> so so what did you grow up calling it? I grew up calling it Coke, but I feel like that's clearly wrong. But because the sentence, I'd like a Coke, what kind, Diet Coke, or what kind, Sprite, seems wrong to me. You grew up in Tennessee. I did grow up in Tennessee. Um East Tennessee. You know, it's a university town, Knoxville. We should we should they should they have professors in a university there who should be researching these things. We shouldn't have to solve this. Yeah, where is the primary university research facility into the vernacular of Coke versus soda versus pop? I think it's on this website. Yeah, on on the most reliable source of information that we that we control, which is Wikipedia, mm-hmm. it says that uh, there's a linguistic at Cambridge who's been studying it in conjunction with other regional vocabularies of American English. So somebody yes. is getting paid money to figure this out, and it's not us. Well, he's also going back. Are you talking about Andrew Schloss? Good old Andrew. I'm talking about Bert Vo. Bert Vo. Yeah. How did I miss Bert Vo in my very slim researching? Oh, you don't, oh, you didn't read the first, the first passage in Wikipedia as Bert Vo. The second one as Andrew Schloss. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I dig. When I go into Wikipedia, I dig deep immediately. <laughs> I don't want this. I don't want your, I don't want your overview. You take your overview and cram it. I'm going to be the guy that reads every word in the museum that is Wikipedia and makes all his friends wait at the exit in the gift shop. I did see you. Uh, we had the occasion to visit the Smithsonian together. Uh, the, yeah. The Museum of American Heritage, right? Isn't that the building that we were in? Uh, American History. American History. And my sister-in-law was there. She's a teacher. And she was there visiting with a group of the of kids from the school. 
And so she and another adult supervisor had some kids that they were taking, you know, all the kids split up and they each had a couple of adults with them and they got to tour around the museum for a certain amount of time. So the kids that were with my sister-in-law won the lottery because you, who who had said, <laughs> I have to go get changed. We were doing a Night Vale show that night. I have to go get changed. You proceeded to give probably the best tour you could get of the American History Museum because you know more than anybody who works there about American history. Well, I I actually just know that museum quite well because my sister lives in D.C. And anytime I go, I always visit that museum because I feel like I have to go pay respect to Thomas Jefferson's desk and Abraham Lincoln's hat and George Washington's chair and also the first video camera that recorded a $10,000 winner on America's Funniest Home Videos, which is in that Smithsonian Museum. At a certain point... Can't we wait to see if something is important history? <laughs> I feel like the jury's still out on America's funniest home videos. Uh, it spawned reality television, my friend. <laughs> like I said, the jury's still out on America's funniest videos. It was the original YouTube, Hal. Listen, it could be the Mount Vesuvius of culture. We don't know that. Do you think it's going to rain ashes upon us all and force us into frozen postures of the moment before our death? Yeah, clearly you haven't seen The Bachelorette. <laughs> All right. Okay. What were we talking about? We're talking about the the. <laughs> who knows? The point is <laughs> that people Coke, soda, or pop. Yeah, people even smarter than us have tried to settle this, and they get yeah. paid to do it. But we're doing it for free, and we're going to do it definitively. And we're going to do it with their research that we found on Wikipedia. Yeah. So thanks, suckers. So let me take a look at uh, uh, what Andrew Schloss has come up with. He went with the history of it. Okay. Soda is the very first one. Soda was the original one, first used to describe carbonation in 1802. Okay. So it was called a soda as of 1802. In 1812, the word pop was invented. Right. Be- probably because of the uh, the bubbles within it. Exactly. It was, it was onomatopoeia uh, derived from the sound of a carbonated beverage being opened. If that's true, shouldn't it be called like a ch- isn't that the noise that it makes? It doesn't make a pop noise when you open a bottle. <laughs> they didn't have cans back then, though. That's true. I guess. Oh, even that was you made a sand. You made a can sound. Oh, maybe it should be called in a. Well, that's if you shook it up first. <laughs> I went. <laughs> I bought my wife a soda yesterday. She asked me to get a soda for her. That was like the one thing I always check with her when I'm on the way home from work to see if she wants me to pick anything up. And she asked for for a Coke, but a Coke Coke. I didn't have to guess that it was like actually a Powerade Zero or whatever other weird things are on a, uh, mm-hmm. are on those soda displays now. And I went to bring it to her and immediately tripped and dropped it. And like each hit, I was like, can't open it, can't open it, can't open it. And it sits in the refrigerator now. <laughs> a carbonated it's not still grenade. Not busy. Yeah. <laughs> actually, uh, turns out I, I actually, uh, saw a thing on this years and years ago. Mm-hmm. It only takes about 10 seconds. For all of that carbonation to settle back down. Uh, have, have you tested that? I'm, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a it was a Penn and Teller thing. It was in some book that I got years ago, and I was always a big Penn and Teller fan uh, for pranks. And that was one of the pranks. Was you? Sh- it was a. Here's what you do: you shake up one can uh, very visually in front of a person, and uh, hold on to another can and don't shake it. Then ask them which can they want. Uh, you know, hem and haw for about 10, 15 seconds. Make sure the can that you shook up is now completely normal. And if you press your thumb near the top of a can, when you open it, it will shoot foam out as if it had just been shaken. <laughs> so it's a magic trick to make it look like the shake went to the other can. I'm sorry for giving away magic secrets on, uh, on podcasts. Yeah. Are you the masked magician? Jeez. The, the I am. Just lost so many listeners who were, who were tuning wasn't, in just to hear us not ruin magic tricks. Wasn't Mitch Pileggi the masked magician? Was he? Or was he was just the announcer for the show? He probably was. I don't, I, I no. feel like for him to be, for him to actually show his face, you know what I mean? Like the masked magician who was giving away all the tricks didn't want the magic world to know who he was, but Mitch Pileggi had no problem with magic hating him. He, I, it might have been him, but I feel like at some point he ripped the mask off. He's, and, and like, Whoever he was, I, I don't think it was Mick, Mitch Pileggi. It might have been, but I, like I remember it being like, "It's me, Fernando," and like whoever it was, all I could think of was he probably thinks that's a really big deal, but none of us know who he is. <laughs> okay, here we go. I brought it up. Okay, it is uh, 
incognito magician Val Valentino played yeah. the masked magician. Yeah, and he takes the mask off and goes, it was me, Val Valentino. But listen, I still maintain that Mitch Pileggi, who was in fact the narrator on the show, is still much derided at the Magic Castle. Well, of course, anybody involved in that, I'm sure, is well, not welcome at the Magic Castle. I, I Look, I know I'm welcome at the Magic Castle. That's all that matters. Yeah, me too. And it is the greatest place in the whole world. I highly recommend everyone out there have a friend who's the door person at the Magic Castle so you can get inside. Yes. If you've never been there, it is the, it is like the Society of Magicians. This is the, it's this beautiful castle-like building, um, on Franklin Boulevard in Hollywood. And mm-hmm. you have to know a member and be invited in. You wear a suit and tie. And they have a, a very nice restaurant and several rooms where you will watch magic and patios and little dungeon areas and nooks and crannies where there's always strange magic going on. Uh, I think my favorite thing in the Magic Castle is the close-up room. Yes. I love the close-up room because it's enclosed and you've got all your focus centered on one person. It's about a 40-seat theater. And uh, and boy, are these guys good. I saw this one guy. Uh, I believe he was from China who is the most precise – uh, the most precise magician I have ever seen. And this, and what's funny is it's like, it was like Beijing Olympics precise. And, uh, and I still have no idea how he did a single one of his tricks. And he would do them slowly and quickly and vary things up and do things twice and three times. And still I couldn't figure out what he was doing. And did you have, there are two seats in that room. So it's a very small theater, as Mark said. And then there's a very small table. And the magician does all his magic at that table. And there are two seats, one on either side of that table, where people sit. Like, those are their seats for the show. So you can see directly into the hands of the magician. You're, you're, you're sitting right in front of him or her while they do their stuff. Can I give you a word of advice? Do not look him in the eyes. <laughs> all of them. Any of the magicians there, they will steal your soul right out of your body. Yeah, and your wallet right out of your pocket. Yeah, that's what they do. Um, let's get back to the topic at hand, Hal, for Pete's sake. My goodness. Uh, so in 1880, soft drink was invented. Uh-huh. 1909, people first started using Coke uh, as a term. 1920, cola. So that was right on the heels of Coke being a term. 1939, I like this one, bubble tonic. Yes. Can we can can we say that's the winner? <laughs> I kind of want to. It's from that era, era in like the late 30s where everything had like the whizomatic. And yeah. the, the crazy curly car bumper. He will call people Mr. Yeah. Say, Mr., can I get a bubble tonic? <laughs> you sure can, pal. <laughs> Another great one, uh, 1951. Uh, the Fizzwa. <laughs> F-I-Z-Z hyphen W-A. Fizzwa. Which is supposed to be fizzy water, right? Oh, snap. Did I just blow your mind? You just blew my mind right out the back of my head. Because it's basically like a baby trying to say fizzy water. Yeah. Fizzwa. Fizzwa. <laughs> I wonder if it was a baby in an ad executive office that was like, what do you think, baby? What should we call this? Fizzwa. That kid's a genius. All right. Um. <laughs> so I'm looking at the map, the pop versus soda map. Yes. There. Oh, yeah. If you and go. It really, really does break down. Uh, go to pop versus soda dot com. Mm-hmm. And you can see this map. It uh, it really does break down completely regionally. And looking at the map right now, I can tell you that uh, Wisconsin, uh, the area around Kansas City and St. Louis, the uh, entire eastern seaboard, and uh, all of California calls it soda. Yeah, it looks like the most densely populated areas. You've got like the mm-hmm. Chicago area. um, like there's a little pocket within within the Midwest up in Detroit um, or up in Michigan a little bit more. Uh, uh, Wisconsin in particular, there's a lot of soda there. Mm-hmm. But uh, th- like that's where that's where soda kind of dominates. Now, Coke is the American Southeast and, and Texas, a little bit of the sort of the proper South, which makes sense because – Coca-Cola is was created and is still bottled and mainly distributed out of Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, and they are and they cover really everything in the south except South Florida, which does have a lot of northeastern influence. Yeah. Uh North Carolina is an absolute mess. I'm looking at North Carolina right now. They don't know what to call it. <laughs> this is the worst electorate map. This yeah. is sort of like you can see the sodas gerrymandering because there are little like dots where where Coke has taken a foothold in the north or 
<laughs> yeah, somehow Coke took a foothold right in the middle of uh, North Dakota, in one county in North Dakota. <laughs> Uh, also, also a mess, Nevada. Get your crap together, Nevada, and figure out what you want to call it. Yeah, a lot of problems there. But I feel like the city folk, call, looking at this map, the city folk call it soda, and um, pop and coke are reserved for uh, more suburban and rural areas. Okay, so you've already said you think coke is wrong. I feel like, I mean, I have such an affinity for calling it that. Look, I have an affinity for a lot of things about the South, but the South did a lot of things wrong. Sure. Um, slavery, calling soda Coke. What else? That was the list, right? Those are the two things. Yeah. You're, you're going to put those on a, on a level playing field with one another. <laughs> yes. I guess the city thing I said earlier, now that I'm looking at it, is wrong because it really is regional. It's not like – there's not little localized pockets around the cities. It, this map really makes it look like pop has taken a foothold. But looking at it, it's really all of those giant, expansive Western states. Right. But he- here's the problem. Here's the problem with Coke, though. If you're from anywhere else and you go in and ask for a Coke or somebody mm-hmm. asks you for a Coke, you you immediately assume they're asking for a specific brand of drink. Mm-hmm. But like uh, my my wife is from is from the south, from like North Florida area, and they had Jiffy stores. Did you have Jiffy stores in Tennessee? We didn't. We had Waggles. So they're Waggles, Jiffy's, Wawa, basically 7-Eleven, like whatever the mm-hmm. local chain of convenience store is. And mm-hmm. she loved – she would always talk about Jiffy Cokes. Like those are the best sodas. Get a, <laughs> get a Jiffy Coke because the syrup was perfect. And the first time we ever went into the – the like we're there. I'm at the Jiffy that I've heard so much about and I go in to get her – a Jiffy Coke, and there's only Pepsi on the fountain. And I was immediately like, oh, how am I going to tell her that her beloved Coke has been <laughs> supplanted by those demons over at PepsiCo? Oh, I think I know where this is going to end. And then I realized, oh, it was a Pepsi all along. <laughs> Jiffy Pepsi Coke. was her name for Jiff- – or Jiffy Coke yeah, was, was Coke. her name for Pepsi. Yeah, Coke meant Pepsi. And it, it was mind-boggling to me. I, like I was confused. If he told me to go in there and get a Coke, I would not have gone to that fountain. I would have immediately gone to a cold case to grab a bottle of Coca-Cola. It's confusing. So you go, you go bottle before you go fountain? Or is that just because the fountain only had Pepsi? Well, famously, you know, I don't drink soda at all. But my first – Oh, that's <laughs> right. We did a whole episode about that. I'm saying if you sent me into a store – and I had sure. to, I had to ask. I think I called her on the phone. She was like outside because you know it was the it was the mid two thousands to the early sure. 2000s. And everybody still called, so you couldn't have texted her and said, you know what? But, yeah. What kind do I get? I said, I I yeah, I think there's a problem here. There's only Pepsi on this fountain. She said, No, that's the Jiffy Coke. I went, Okay. Can, I feel like we can rule out Coke. Yeah. Even though I have a nostalgia for it, it feels wrong. And and you're right, and 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 it causes problems in other regions when someone from the south asks for a coke and they're handed a coke and they say, "No, I meant a sprite." Well, why'd you say coke? It's just it's rife with problems. Yeah, it's just creating fights. And is there any other product where we do that? Well, yeah, Kleenex, Q-tips. I guess so, but those are like they're you're hardly brand. They're not aware. a flavor. Yeah, like do you they don't. I don't. I don't think they have flavored Q-tips. <laughs> I hope not. We'll never find out. I hope. Are you going to find out? You're going to eat a Q-tip, aren't you? I'm going I'm, I'm to eat a Q-tip. <laughs> hey, Hal. Yeah. Can we hit pause for like 10 seconds while I go eat a Q-tip? Yeah, sure. I'll pause it. And we're back. That Q-tip was not as delicious as I expected it to be. What flavor was it? White. <laughs> You know what? I don't taste colors when I eat Q-tips, Mark. Oh, yeah. Look at you. You're so much more enlightened than me. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. Let's move on to soda. Okay. Um, this is what I grew up with. It, they were sodas. I like I, I like soda because it really is. It's the primary ingredient. It's the one common denominator that they all have. You know what I mean? Yeah, sodium. Exactly. The the very basis, the sodium bicarbonate. Which I always I think of sodium, I think of sodium bicarbonate, I think of baking soda or I think of uh carbonated water, but I think of sodium and I think salt. Does that does that, uh, does that seem odd? No, it makes sense. 
It's definitely a. It is definitely a mark in the minus column for soda. Because it makes you think it's salty. Make me think it's a salty beverage. <laughs> Have you had a salty beverage? Is that is that a thing? I feel like that's just something sailors say. <laughs> no, but um, I don't know. I guess is there salt in brine? Because I've had a pickleback with a beer before. I get a pickleback with a beer. What is that? Yeah. It's a shot of pickle juice that you drink after you drink – not with a, not with a beer, with a whiskey. You drink a shot of whiskey and then you drink a shot of pickle juice and it kills the burn so you can have more whiskey. Where would you learn that? At Penn and Teller's Bar? <laughs> like, Here, drink, drink this drink this pickle back. This is a normal thing. The bartender was silently snickering from behind the bar. He was the shorter one. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think of a salty beverage well, the, when I think of. Isn't there one at like the World of Coke? Have you ever, have you ever been to the World of Coca Cola in Atlanta? I have. Did we talk about this in our last episode where we talked about Coke versus Pepsi? We talked about it in Coke versus Pepsi, but is there one that's yeah. pickled flavored? Because maybe that's a thing. No, there can't be. There is a Mountain Dew that's Doritos flavored. The well, that's just the decline of Western civilization. <laughs> sure, sure. That's the uh, that's the the culinary equivalent of Trump for president. <laughs> um, they only did it on a couple of college campuses, but, uh, yeah, like that's nothing to me sounds worse. I love Doritos sure, and I love soda. I'm not a Mountain Dew guy because I feel like that's for cramming for finals. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I feel like I'm too good. old for Mountain Dew. Is that weird? I no, I think it's okay, but I love soda and I love Doritos, but that's not a marriage that should have happened. That is an unsanctioned. I, I would have stood up if they asked, does anyone in this congregation uh, oppose this union or however they phrase it? <laughs> I don't know. You've done weddings. I have. How many weddings? How many weddings have you officiated now? I now? have officiated one, two, three, four weddings. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's just take a, a, a brief break here. Have you mm-hmm. seen the Count's official Twitter profile? No. If you go to at Count Von Count since mm-hmm. 2012, I think, it's just mm-hmm. every – like sometimes it's once a day. Sometimes it's a couple times a day. It's just numbers counting from one up. And every once in a while, it's accompanied with an ah, 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 ah or I wonder <laughs> what will come next. It is the greatest that like that's why Twitter exists. It's not to get breaking news. It's not to express opinions or it's not to have people. a revolution no. in a foreign country. It's for the count to just count. You know what? What the guy knows his game. <laughs> he does. He's not ashamed. All right. What else can we say about soda? I think it's just the st- like to me. It's the standard bearer. I didn't grow up anywhere. Like the first time I heard pop was in college. I feel like that's the first time you really get exposed. On a regular basis to a bunch of people who have spent the majority of their lives somewhere else. Yes. Uh, for me, actually, Chicago is a pop town. They're not a soda town. Um, and I grew up saying Coke. And then when I got to Chicago for college, everyone said pop. And I kind of liked pop. I vary it up. Sometimes I will say soda. Sometimes I'll say pop. Sometimes I'll say soda pop. Pop feels like something you say at, at like a Johnny Rockets to sound retro. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's, like it feels, it feels like, old timey. Yeah, like it's frozen in amber. But we both love old timey. Clearly, of course, of course we do. Who doesn't love oldie timey stuff? We we come from oldie timey stock, but still, at a certain point, you have to let some of the vernacular go, don't you? <laughs> like, it's not cute, is it? Yeah. Well, you know what? I, it depends on the accent. I feel like pop may be reserved for the wrong, reserved and currently being used in the wrong regions. You know, it's being used in Chicago where it's going to come out a lot of times as pop. If it was in the South and it was like a trip thong, give me one of a, a pop. <laughs> That's true. In Savannah, I would love to hear everybody call it pop. Yeah. Well, let me get some of that pow up over the hill. California, if they said pop in California, pop, pop. <laughs> this is, this is devolved is what this is done. I think you've turned into every impressionist comedian from the 80s like could you imagine if reagan ordered a pop i think it'd go something like this <laughs> well pop <laughs> i mean right we're in a fight now hal we're in a fight now <laughs> no we're not in a fight we're in a fight we're look no we're not in a fight we can't be in a fight um <laughs> yeah pop just feels immature to me it feels immature for all you people who grew up saying pop you sound like little kids when you say it don't you think um I don't know. It still feels charming to me. 
it's charming, but a lot of things that little kids do are charming that don't work for adults. Like you can't just walk up to somebody, show them your skinned elbow and start pouting your lip out. Exactly. At a certain point, you have to grow up. Yeah. You know what? Put on a Band-Aid and uh, stop calling it pop. Stop calling it Coke because that's silly and starts fights. And Hal, are we ready to rule on this? I think we have to. It's clear. The answer is soda. Yeah, it's soda. All you people out there that try to argue for pop or Coke or fizzy wah or bubble water or w- whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'm still going to go for fizz wah or uh, bubble tonic. Fizz wah and bubble tonic are acceptable second and third choices, but it's called soda. That's what it was called in the early days. That's what it should be called now. It's not named after the sound that a bottle makes when it opens. That is preposterous, people. It's time to grow up as a nation and not be these little kids saying pop all the time. We are grown-ups. Grow up and be universal in your language. It's not pop. It's not Coke. It's soda. Yeah. Thank you. And if Definitively you, answered. Listen, if you want to drive that car or you want to live on your own, Mr. or Mrs., you're going to start calling it soda like a grown-up. Yeah. And you're going to start calling all of it soda. It's now soda corn. Yeah. And soda I. Soda music. <laughs> are, are you hearing all of this dinging? Are you getting the same dinging I'm getting? Right now, guys, we're we're at a big text thread with everybody from the Thrilling Adventure Hour. <laughs> and the whole Thrilling Adventure Hour cast is texting massively right now. It started a few minutes ago. Yeah. And my phone is dinging nonstop. Paget Brewster is causing our collective phones to blow up. <laughs> So that one is settled, but there are lots more debates out there that Hal and I can tackle for your listening amusement and for your definitive arguments. (laughs) Arguments. Yeah. Bar arguments. Arguments. The title I originally pitched for this show, by the way, but Hal doesn't drink, so it wouldn't have worked. Yeah, that's right. It would have been waiting in the arguments if it was me. (laughs) Guys, you know. We want to know what's important to you that's important to nobody else that we can settle for you. And you can let us know very easily by emailing us at wegotthispodcast at gmail.com. Or uh, find us on Twitter at wegotthistweets. Or you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash wegotthispodcast. And we would love to thank our brand new home, Maximum Fun, for letting us under their roof and getting getting us out of the rain. Yes, we're very excited to be here and drying off. And if you like the music that you hear at the top of the show, the the score at the very beginning is done by Jonathan Dinerstein. And our amazing theme song is done by Mike Furman. And if you like hearing our voices clearly, you can thank Ken Plume for that, our amazing editor-engineer. Uh, thank you, Ken. Until next time, for Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Lublin. For Hal Lublin, I'm Mark Gagliardi. And don't worry, everyone. We We got got this. this. We got this. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Bikini season. Volleyball time. Hot dogs and hamburgers. Get ready to Olympic dive. Fourth of July. Are you ready for rollerblading ring time? That's right. It's Aaron and Brian from Throwing Shade, if you didn't know from that very clear intro. We We take a look at issues involving ladies and gays, and we treat them with much less respect than they deserve. So watch out, punks. So, hey, download us and take us to the beach while you're doing your summertime fun. I'm Biz. And I'm Teresa. And we host One Bad Mother, a comedy podcast about parenting. We say all the horrible things about having kids, so you don't have to. And you can come across as the magical vessel, Pinterest perfect parent, society wants you to be. One Bad Mother. Because this is hard, and nobody gives a Check us out on iTunes and MaximumFun.org.